one. Good afternoon and welcome to the Board of Health meeting of February 8th, 2021. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be available shortly hereafter for scheduled and on-demand viewing on any smartphone or tablet device. If anyone else is recording the meeting, please notify the chairman. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Chatham Board of Health is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings to prov as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by calling the phone number posted. That number is 1508-945-4410, and the call-in ID number is 672-702-531-POUND. Despite our best efforts, if we are not able to provide for real-time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as possible. Um, I'd also like to ask if anyone is not speaking, they can mute their phones. That will help with any feedback. Um, now I'll turn the meeting over to the Board of Health Chairman, John Beckley. Thank you, Judy. I'd like to start off this meeting by uh, doing a roll call to establish that we have a quorum of members present. When I call your name, please indicate whether you're on the call. Dr. Noble Hansen. Present. Ron Broman. Okay, did not hear Ron. Ed Sheehan. Yes. Okay, I'm on the call, John Beckley. Carol Boyce. Present. Okay. Uh, and we have, I believe, two alternate members. Dr. Alan Ward, are you on the call? Here. Yes. And Dr. Richard Edwards, are you on the call? Present. Beautiful. Before we start, I'd like to issue a nice welcome to two new members, Carol Boyce, who's on screen and is a, a new Board of Health member who was recently sworn in and Dr. Richard Edwards, who is a, uh, a essentially a second alternate um, as well. So a, a big welcome to both of our new board members and um, let's get on with the agenda. We have a pretty long agenda tonight. Let's start with item one, which is a variance hearing and approval of IA technology for Eric and Trish Lindbergh, and the address is 25 Harbor Hill, and the applicant representing them is Clark Engineering. Before I, before I introduce Mr. Clark, I'd, last, I'd like to ask Judy to just, for the benefit of our two new members, just give a, a very brief context that um, describes this kind of a variance, because we're going to see uh, quite a few of these come to us over time. And I know when I started, I didn't know what IA meant or I didn't really understand what the board was doing. So Judy, can you just, just kind of give a brief overview of the context for this kind of an application? Sure. <clears throat> so um, in this case, uh, they're basically requesting to add an, an in-law apartment or an extra bedroom. And the court, the board of uh, the, the board of health has nitrogen loading regulations, which allow one bedroom per 10,000 square feet of lot area. But if um, an applicant wishes to add an extra bedroom above what they have and agrees to put in a um, secondary treatment unit, also called an um, innovative alternative or an IA septic system. Um, we would allow, uh, usually by right, the, the um, applicant to add the bedroom. Um, these do require review from the Board of Health. Uh, that's what's in front of you today. Um, and the, the idea being that you get better uh, nitrogen reduction from um, the system with the IA component um, 
than you would with, you know, four or less bedrooms with a regular conventional septic system. So that's basically what we're looking at. And we do have, I think, two or three of these on our agenda tonight. So very good, Judy. Okay, so that's kind of a brief overview of this type of, of variance uh, request. Um, with that, let me introduce uh, David Clark, who's the engineer representing the applicants to give us a brief overview. Uh, good afternoon, David Clark, uh, Clark Engineering on behalf of the Lindberg's. Um, what they have here is a one acre lot, 40,000 square feet uh, with a, an existing four bedroom dwelling. And as Judy said, under the nitrogen loading regulation, they would only be allowed to have one bedroom per 10,000 square, square feet or the four bedrooms that they have. Uh, they've gone to Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for a special permit to add an in-law apartment. Uh, that is an addition off the back side of the house. Uh, that apartment has one bedroom in it. And under the nitrogen loading regulations, uh, we're allowed to come to the board and ask for an additional bedroom if we uh, propose a new Title V system with a treatment technology. Uh, so we are proposing a new five bedroom septic system with the singular uh, innovative alternative technology uh, treatment system. Uh, that system is credited by the state uh, to uh, increase uh, sewage flow on a lot to 660 gallons per acre or basically 60 th six bedrooms per acre. Um, and so it does have the certification by the state as a nitrogen removing technology. Um, as always, as, as Judy said, uh, it, a, a system with treatment uh, typically will introduce less nitrogen into groundwater than a septic system without treatment. Uh, I did provide floor plans um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay, thank you, David. Um, any questions from Board of Health members as to the design or the layout of this plan or anything relating to the application itself? Looks pretty straightforward to me. Yes, uh, Ed Sheehan. Uh, yeah, this is noble. So is the old um, Title V septic being removed? Uh, yes, it is. Well, we're going to try to reuse uh, some of the components, but uh, it, it's just not in a location that's conducive to expanding it or or reusing any of the existing components in the location it's at. So we're going to dig it up, um, first pump it dry, uh, both the tank and the leach field, uh, try to remove the concrete components and reuse them in a slightly different configuration and location. David, does this have involve any pumping? It, it is not. Uh, only to, to remove the contents of the existing systems, but the, oh. the new system is not a pump system, no. It's a gravity, gravity feed. Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, I'm fi I'm personally fine with it. Um, Judy, I know we have a memorandum from you uh, recommending that uh, we approve. And you have you've provided a list of nine uh, conditions that you believe ought to be attached to this if we do approve it. Can I get a motion from a Board of Health member to approve? Ed Sheehan, approve. Can I get a second? Uh, Noble second. Okay. Um, and Ed and Noble, I'm assuming that you are making your motions and your second with the condition that the the approval carry with them the, the nine stipulated conditions on the memo. Yeah, this is Noble. That Judy, read them as usual. Yes. Judy, can we ask you to read through them for the record? Yes. Um, the applicant should restrict the property to a maximum of five bedrooms and record this restriction on the deed at the Barnstable County Register of Deeds. 
and submit a copy of the ex executed deed restriction uh, to the Board of Health. Throughout its life, the system shall be under an operation and maintenance agreement. The operation and maintenance agreement shall be for less than one year and be with any mass certified operator of the appropriate grade that has received training by the company on the operation of the system. If effluent from the system shall be monitored at least twice per year for the first two years, preferably May and October, the effluent shall be field tested in accordance with mass DEP conditions for secondary treatment units certified for general use, revised March 20th, 2015. In, dish, in addition, a lab test of the effluent for total nitrogen to meet the performance standard of 19 milligrams per liter shall be collected and analyzed by a certified lab. Water meter readings are to be provided with the semi-annual report. If any of the field tests or lab tests fail, follow-up tests shall be conducted by a certified lab and an evaluation made by the operator within 30 days. After the required two years, testing application will be made to the board or its agent for review and possible modification of the monitoring requirements. The applicant shall sign a covenant with the board agreeing to comply at such time as the Town of Chatham through its Board of Health and or Board and Water Sewer Commissioners directs the property the connection of this property to the municipal sewer when it becomes available. This shall, this covenant shall be recorded at the Barnesville County Registry of Deeds. The applicant agrees to apply a minimum of six inches of compacted topsoil to landscaped areas of the property and abide by requirements of the Conservation Commission for mitigation and planting as required. The engineer shall submit an engineered as-built plan according as-built elevations with a written certification that the system has been installed in accordance with the approved plan. No alteration to the floor plan of the dwelling or the engineered site plan will be allowed without further review by the Board of Health or its agent. And this variance is granted pursuant to the State Environmental Code Title V and the Town of Chatham Subsurface Sewage Regulations is valid for one year from the date of the Board of Health approval. A permit must be issued and work commenced during the one-year period or the variance shall expire. Okay, thank you, Judy. Any additional comments from any Board of Health members? Does anybody from the public wish to comment on this before we vote on it? Hearing none, I'll call the question. When I call your name, please indicate how you vote on the motion. Dr. Noble Hansen. Approve. Ed Sheehan. Approve. I vote to approve John Beckley. Carol Boyce. Approve. Okay. And Ron Broman, are you are you on the call yet? Okay, we have our four votes to approve. Um in this case, the um, the alternates do not nor normally cast a, a vote. A vote because they're not needed for for the quorum. Okay, so the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Clark, you're good to go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, let's move the agenda to item number two, which is a preliminary subdivision plan review from Chatham Productions, LLC, at 776 Main Street and 70 Depot Road. Uh, again, Clark Engineering, representing the applicant, David Clark. You've got the floor again. Uh, good afternoon, uh, David Clark, Clark Engineering, on behalf of Chatham Productions, LLC. As required by the subdivision control law, uh, this preliminary plan, was filed with the Board of Health for its review. Um, we are scheduled to meet with the Planning Board on February 22nd to discuss this. Um, being a preliminary plan, um, it, re it only requires a certain level of detail, uh, namely uh, the arrangements of the lots in a general manner with dimensions and approximate areas. Uh, and also the general layout of the roadway and uh, stormwater controls. Um, the final plans will have a much greater level of detail. Uh, basically, there will be construction drawings uh, showing all the uh, utilities uh, and 
road construction uh, details. Uh, <clears throat> so what's proposed is are six lots uh, off a road, a, a new subdivision road coming off a depot road. There is an existing dwelling out on depot road that will be removed to facilitate the subdivision, as well as two outbuildings that serve uh, the 776 Main Street uh, Old Monomoy Theater. Um, it's intended that these lots be used for residential purposes. Uh, that's why we're coming off a depot road, to, so there's a separation uh, between the residential and the two buildings out on Route 28 Main Street. Um, <clears throat> both depot road and Route 28 uh, have uh, municipal sewer available. So this project uh, will be connected to the municipal sewer. No on-site sewage disposal uh, is proposed, uh, nor I don't, I believe it would be allowed under the rules and regulations. Um, that's about it. Um, again, it's a, it's a preliminary plan uh, showing things in less detail than, than you're accustomed to, and certainly we will be back before you sometime in the future with the full design set. Uh, Dave, this is Charlie Beckley. Um, question, what, a, what is the future to bring in regard to the use of the, of the buildings along Route 28? Um, whatever that use will be will conform to the bylaw or what Zoning Board of Appeals approves. So nothing, so, nothing's been uh, established yet. No. Okay. And when we, Judy, when we approve this preliminary subdivision, are we approving essentially the top part involving the six lots, or are we approving the whole, the whole layout? Um, I, I believe we're approving the, the subdivision as it's presented. Um, we, we're not approving per se as recommending for approval or if we have any um, strong opinions uh, from a public health standpoint why it shouldn't be approved, we could okay. say that as well. Okay. And and David, the, the, the black circles that we see on the preliminaries, uh, are those surface water drainage? Yes. So the road is there. You'll see a, there's a set of catch basins as you come down from Depot Road, and that stormwater uh, is routed to two leach pits. And then at the cul-de-sac, there are two more catch basins, which similarly collect the water and route it to two leach pits. Okay. So just to remind the board, under the subdivision control law, uh, uh, the, the, the Board of Health's review is limited to whether... Um, if any of the lots are unsuitable for the on-site disposal of sewage, um, that's that's what the subdivision control law states. Um, and so, as far as use, um, I, I don't think the, the board of health has purview over that. Um, and uh, traditionally, the Chatham board of health also looks at stormwater design. Um, and at the time of the final subdivision, we will be providing stormwater calculations for this project. Dr. Duncanson, I see your hand is up. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, hey, David, I just had a question. I heard you speaking to catch basins and leach pits. Um, would it be a safe assumption on my part that you will give thought to things like uh, rain gardens and other alternatives to standard leach pits for runoff? Um, I don't think we have the space for that. Um, anything other than standard leach pits and catch basins take up a considerable amount of room, uh, and there's, there's just no room to put those types of uh, treatment systems in. Okay, well, I, I would just hope that um, you know, it, at least they're given a brief look at to see if anything is feasible, uh, because we all know that from a nitrogen perspective, uh, you know, injecting it directly into a leach pit doesn't do much good. So anyway, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, th this is Noble. Uh, are there uh, are there two separate lots here or, or, or one? 
There are, well, right now, um, yeah. the existing conditions, uh, there are two lots. There's a house on its own lot out on depot, and then, which I think is less than a half acre in size. I think it's probably around 15,000 or so, maybe 10,000 square feet. And the rest of the land comprises uh, the, the theater and the and 768 Main Street um, Main Street frontage. Right. So are we uh, we are approving um, town sewer hookup either up to Depot Street or down to 20 Route 28 across the, the where the old theater is now. Either, either way. Well, that that's still to be decided. Uh, I have to talk to uh, the owners about uh, how we want to manage connecting to the sewer. Um, certainly, 776 and 768 are already connected to the sewer. Um, and I believe the house on Depot is connected. I know we did a sewer connection plan for the previous owner. Um, I don't know if they ever actually went through with the connection. I don't believe the house is occupied at this point. Um, but the, 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 as I said earlier, um, the, there's sewer available in Depot and there's sewer available on Route 28. Um, we can achieve gravity feed by going through what's shown as lot seven on the plan and connecting out to Route 28. Uh, we prefer to go gravity, but there's some logistical and permitting issues we get uh, tying into Route 28 in that we have to tap the existing main and put a manhole in. Um, so uh, that can be expensive um, with the mass highway requirements for digging in Route 28. Uh, and then also the logistics of tying up Route 28 to, to execute that. In order to connect to Depot Road, the system would have to be a pump system. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we would then look at whether it is more economical to put a pump station in and have all six lots uh, tie gravity into that pump system, pump station, and then pump up the hill to Depot, or have five or have five, uh, six individual pumps for each dwelling unit uh, tying into a force main that goes up the hill. So we haven't looked at that yet. Um, obviously, gravity has its advantages, but unfortunately, we're dealing with Route 28. Um, but uh, again, we haven't worked that out yet. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, 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 that's fine with me. I and I just reemphasize that what we're doing now has nothing to do with the, the, the demolition issues or the ultimate use of the buildings that is are there. We're just permitting the, the town sewer hookup on the lot. Correct. Okay. Any more questions? Any more questions from Board of Health or comments, Board of Health members, on the uh, plan review? Don, I have a comment. This is Judy. Go ahead. I just wanted to remind the board and and David that um, these are residential lots. They still have to comply with the nitrogen loading regs, even if they're connected to sewer. Um, mm -hmm. They would. They would be allowed um, additional flow above what we allow, what we would allow under Title V, but they do have, they do still come under our regs um, in accordance with the the sewer department's regulations. So these are small lots, so they're going to, if they're going to be residential, they're going to be small, obviously small dwellings. How many bedrooms will they be allowed to have, Judy? Well, our regulations say two bedrooms on any vacant lot. So with sewer, I guess they would be allowed three. So I guess that's that's a reasonable size dwelling. Okay. Additional questions or comments? Hey, John. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I was just going to say number 70 depot is listed as being on town sewer currently. Thank you, Bob. All right. All right. Can I get a mo? Now this is going to come back to us, correct? Correct. Yeah, it's required to come back to you. Yes. Okay. 
Can I get a motion to approve from a board member? This is Noble, a motion to approve the variance with Judy. I guess there's nothing for her to read. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a variance. Um, okay. It, it, it's it's a motion to subdivision. approve right. the subdivision, the yeah. preliminary subdivision. Uh, approve the uh, proposed subdivision. Can I, can I get a second? Hey, John. Yes, Bob. Yeah, if if Noble's making the um, motion, it, the motion should clarify that it's to approve the preliminary subdivision. All right, Noble, are you willing to accept that wording? Yes, uh, approve the preliminary uh, subdivision. Prefer Thank you. Very good. Can I get a second from a board member? Second. Okay, Carol Boyce, second. Any further discussion from any board members? Anybody from the public wish to comment on this uh, motion? If not, let's go ahead with the vote. When I call your name, please indicate how you vote on the motion in a second. Dr. Noble Hansen. Approve. Ed Sheehan. No. Uh, John Beckley, I approve. Carol Boyce. Approve. Okay, we have uh, three votes to approve, so the motion carries. Thank you very much. You're good to go. Have a good afternoon. You too. All right. All right, let's go to item number three on the agenda, which is get it. Okay, item number three is a variance hearing to upgrade a failed septic system for Sears Point Summer Sumner LLC at 65 Sears Road. Representing the applicant is East Southeast LLC. Thad Eldridge, are you on the call? Good afternoon, Thad Eldridge here. Okay, Thad, please introduce the application. All righty. So last summer, the um, the folks at 65 were having their septic tank pumped out and the outlet T broke off and solids got into the leaching field. Uh, they're also looking to convey this from the older generation to the younger generation. So it's good timing for a failure. Uh, they were able to limp through the rest of the summer with the existing system, but they're not gonna make it much longer uh, into the next one. The site is large, it actually conforms with zoning, but it's mostly wet. Um, if anyone had a chance to go out there, there's a long winding driveway that goes through wetland and it gets you to a bit of upland that overlooks Stage Harbor. So we have bordering vegetated wetland surrounding everything along with coastal bank and floodplain. Under the state, we're supposed to meet a 50 foot setback and we're meeting that with everything proposed. Under the town, we're supposed to meet the 100 foot setback and there's no place on the site to meet that 100 foot. The driveway is very small, so we are looking at maintaining as much of that as possible. We have proposed to replumb inside the building, go out to a new septic tank, and then out to a leaching area that meets the 50 foot setback, 51 from the coastal bank. And it only minorly affects the parking area. To do this, the water line will have to be relocated and it should be pretty good. We're going to Conservation Commission on Wednesday for their approval and we're here today for yours. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Thad. So this is an existing six bedroom dwelling, which will remain a six bedroom dwelling. Mm 
we have a memorandum from the health agent, Judy, to the Board of Health members uh, recommending we approve this application with the stipulation that there will be four different conditions added to it. Any Board of Health members have any questions about the layout or the design? I don't hear any. Judy, would do you want to have any comments on it? Um, no, I, I think that the Thad has done a good job getting this system um, outside of the fifty. He couldn't get it um, within the hundred outside of the hundred foot setback, which is what our local regs require. Um, so this is just a local variance, not a Title Five variance. Um, he's using a, a good layout of chambers with no stone. Um, I don't have any issues with it. I, I think it's as it's squeezed in there as best he can. Um, everything because it's so close to the um, the driveway and part of it, I guess, is under the driveway. Everything should be H20 components. Um, and yeah, no, I, I don't have any big issues with this at all. And if I may add to that, this is going to be a couple of feet above the driveway. So the existing retaining wall that's there between the driveway and the house, we're going to extend that around. That's that bubbly line. Okay. Yeah. And so we, when for the chambers, definitely the H20. The tank itself, it's either way. We can put an H20 if, if the agent would like that. But it's um, driving up there is not really going to be feasible. Yeah, that's fine. I, I didn't realize that. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I should have done better with the profile showing that wall. Yeah. Well, it sounds it sounds to me that the applicant is doing the very best they can to maximize the separation distance given the restraint of the lot. So I'm fine with it. It is a uh, an improvement over what is. So I would I would welcome an a, uh, a recommendation for approval or a motion to approve from a board member. Yeah, this is noble. Yeah, I agree. Um, converting the assessed pool to a Title Five septic. So uh, I would propose we um, uh, we move to approve the, the variance with Judy reading the uh, conditions. Okay. Can I get a second to that motion? Ed Sheehan. Second. Yeah. We have a second from Ed. Okay, Judy, would you please read the four conditions? Um, yes. The applicant should restrict the property to a maximum of six bedrooms and record this restriction on the deed at the Barnstable County Registry of Deeds and submit a copy of the executed deed restriction to the board. The engineer shall submit an engineered as-built plan um, including as-built elevations with a written certification that the system has been installed in accordance with the approved plan. The applicant agrees to abide by the requirements of the Conservation Commission for mitigation and plantings as required, and no alteration of the floor plan of the dwelling will be allowed without further review by the Hall for its agent. All right, thank you. We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion by any board members? Anybody from the anybody from the public wish to comment on the motion before the board votes? Okay, when I call your name, please indicate how you vote on the motion. Dr. Noble Hansen. Approve. Ed Sheehan. Approve. I approve. John Beckley, Carol Boyce. Approve. Okay, good. We have four votes to approve. Motion carries and the variance is granted. Very good. You're good to go, Thad. Already. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, item number four on the agenda 
is a variance hearing and approval of IA technology, just like the first item on the agenda. For Ronald and Elizabeth McDonald, parcel M2, off of Old Cartway Road, representing this applicant is East Southeast LLC Thad Eldridge once again. Thad, can you please, please introduce this application? For the record, Thad Eldridge, East Southeast. Uh, this is a vacant lot that the McDonald's recently purchased, and they're looking to construct a new home. And they've been toying around between the idea of a two bedroom and a three bedroom, and we're going forward with a three bedroom with the innovative alternative component. We have 20,000 square feet where, as David Clark mentioned earlier, it's uh, one bedroom per 10,000 square feet. Um, have the plus one with the innovative alternative component under the state it's supposed to meet a um a discharge of about 54 percent or better of the nitrogen load and so three bedrooms should produce less than two bedrooms worth we have a well on the adjacent property we're staying outside of that it'll be connected to town water and they're looking forward to sewer in the future. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Did I get cut off? Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. This is John Beckley. I had my thing on mute. Oh, not a problem. I was going to say this looks sort of like a flag lot to me with the proposed house being located behind the house you see from the road. Um, it looks pretty straightforward to me. I don't have any questions or comments on it. We do have a recommendation from Judy, the health agent that uh, we approve the application for three bedrooms. And she does, uh, Judy does list nine different conditions uh, if we proceed with that. Uh, any further board comments or questions on this design? Uh, seems, seems cut and dry for me, Ed Jim. I think it is that can I get a motion to approve from a board member? Motion to approve. Okay, Ed, thank you. Can we get a second? Uh, Noble is second with Judy reading the conditions. Okay. We have uh, a motion and a second. Yes, the motion includes the, the requirement that the conditions be uh, complied with as well. So why don't we ask Judy to read the conditions that are part of the motion. Okay. So these are the same as the first one that we did tonight. So the applicant should restrict the property to a maximum of three bedrooms and record this restriction on the deed at the Barnstable County Register of Deed and submit a copy of the executed deed restriction uh, to the board. Sorry. Um, throughout its life, the system shall be under an operation and maintenance agreement. The O&M agreement shall be at least for one year and may be with any mass certified operator of the appropriate grade that has received training by the company. Effluent from the system shall be monitored twice per year for the first two years, preferably May and October. The effluent shall be field tested in accordance with mass DEP standard conditions for secondary treatment units certified for general use revised March 20th, 2015. In addition, a lab test of the effluent for total nitrogen to meet the performance standard of 19 milligrams per liter shall be collected and analyzed by a certified lab. Water meter readings are to be provided with the semi-annual report. If any of the field tests or lab tests fail, follow-up tests shall be, certified, shall be conducted by a certified lab and an evaluation made by the operator within 30 days. After the required two years testing, application can be made to the board or their agent for review and possible modification of the monitoring requirements. The applicant shall sign a covenant with the board agreeing to comply at such time as the town of Chatham through its board of 
Health and Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners directs the connection of this property to the municipal sewer when it becomes available. The covenant shall be recorded at the Barnstable County Registry of Deeds and a copy submitted to the Board of Health. The applicant agrees to apply six inches of compacted topsoil to all landscape areas of the property. The engineer shall submit an engineered as-built plan, including all as-built elevations with a written certification that the system has been installed in accordance with the approved plan. No alteration to the floor plan of the dwelling or the engineer site plan will be allowed without further review by the board or its agent. This variance is granted pursuant to the State Environmental Code Title V and the Town of Chatham subsurface sewage regulation is valid for one year from the date of the Board of Health approval and a permit must be issued and work commenced during the one year period or the variance shall expire. Thank you, Judy. Okay, we have the motion. We have the uh, conditions read into the record. Do we have any additional questions or comments by the Board of Health members at this time? Any comments from the public at this time? Okay, when I call your name, please indicate how you vote on the motion. Dr. Noble Hansen. Approve. Ron, um, uh, I'm sorry, Ed Sheehan. Approve. I vote to approve John Beckley. Carol Boyce. Approve. Okay, we have four votes to approve. Nobody against. The motion carries. And this item is granted. Thank you, much. You're very welcome, Pat. All right. Let's keep moving this agenda along. We have a a, a, uh, a variance to real estate inspection regulation for a failed septic system for Al Gene Trust or A1 Gene Trust, Eugene Farber and Harvey Ross at one. 44 Chat Harbor Road, and representing the applicant is uh, Attorney William Riley. Bill, are you on the call? I am, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate your time. Uh, you have the floor now. Well, thank you. The the uh, it's it, and it's the Algene uh, Trust, uh, John. In any okay. Event, um, you know, the property's been for sale for a long time, and uh, the uh, and recently we had uh, Bob Dubas take a look at the <clears throat> the septic system, uh, and he discovered that it it it, uh, it had a septic tank that apparently had been added some time after the house was built. Uh, going off to a leach pit that apparently had been a cesspool uh, when the house was built. Uh, that's his; those are his uh, suppositions. But you know, he's been he's been doing this a long time, so we trust his suppositions. The uh, he estimated that the uh, bottom of the leach pit, uh, which is working by the way, uh, was about two and a half feet above groundwater. And the, the goal of my clients uh, at that time, uh, and, and still is, uh, would be to be able to keep using the septic system through the summertime uh, while applying uh, to you and to the Conservation Commission for permission to install uh, an upgrade to the system uh, so that it complies with all, all or most of all the current regulations, basically by having uh, Thad Elders design uh, a leach system and add a D-box uh, to the uh, existing system. Uh, initially, we thought that the persons that are most interested in buying the property, uh, with whom we have a current agreement, uh, would be interested in using it for the summertime. It turns out that's not the case. Uh, we'd like to proceed in any event because we're not absolutely certain uh, that can, you know, that, uh, we might receive another offer from somebody who is. And so we'd like to be able to keep that flexibility. 
Uh, in, his, in his letter to the board, uh, to Judy, uh, Abdul was suggested that if we added a couple of feet of sand uh, to the bottom of the system, the existing pool, a set pool, uh, leach pit, uh, that, that, that that would be sufficient to get through the summertime. And uh, I also point out, of course, that the system has been there for about 50 years. So, uh, you know, we think that, you know, one more summer isn't going to do any more damage, uh, particularly if we add uh, some material to the bottom of the pit to increase the separation. So that would be our presentation, Mr. Chairman. So the you, you, you're not sure you have a new owner, but you may have a new owner, or you may have another new owner. Right. That's correct. Initially, well, initially, uh, we were, uh, you know, my clients were under the impression that the, the people with whom they have a contract uh, would be interested in using it for the summertime while the new system is, was built uh, or designed and approved. Uh, turns out that's not accurate, uh, but, you know, the uh, uh, they'd like the, the flexibility to be able to keep using it uh, either because the persons with whom we have a contract would change their position or because we would enter into an agreement with somebody else. So, Judy, in a normal circumstance, if a home is being sold to a new party and this was discovered as a defect, <coughs> the, new, the new system would have to be installed immediately as part of the transfer of title, true? Um, within 90 days, our local regulations say within 90 days of transfer of property. And that usually is what happens. Um, either the engineering is done and the system gets upgraded shortly after the closing, or a lot of times it happens before the closing. Um, this is a little different, especially in, in light of what Bill said, and that um, we're not really sure what the plans are for the property. Um, originally, when it was submitted to me, it was that these people agreed that the, the buyers, the potential buyers, that they wanted to use it through the summer and renovate and begin their renovations in the fall or sometime thereafter. So I, I'm, I'm not really sure what what's going on here now, but... Um, I don't have a problem with giving them more time to figure out, but I wouldn't go, you know, past the fall. I mean, um, it may be six months would be the maximum time we would give them. Uh, I mean, we don't, even, we, we don't even know if the new buyers are going to want to demolish and rebuild a new home, do we? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, no, we don't, but we've engaged that elders to design the new system. But one way or the other, the new system is going to be installed uh, because we have to go through Conservation Commission. Uh, we don't know how long that's going to take. We hope not too long. Uh, and so, uh, you know, one way or the other, uh, by next September, you know, there'll be a new system installed there. We're just asking for the ability to get through the summer before we do that work, that's all. Okay. So, so, I mean, Thad could still design a new system for that lot, even if the house was demolished, provided it was <laughs> located in a, in a suitable location where there was still space for a new house to be put and disconnected to the new system, true? That's correct. And the, I mean, the history of this lot uh, is... Uh, uh, that uh, the neighbors uh, along Chat Harbor Lane uh, have uh, vehemently and vigorously opposed a couple of applications to change the structure, you know, to demolish it and relocate it or demolish it and build it in the same location but a bigger building. So the uh, so we don't have any idea... Uh, what the ultimate plans the current proposed buyers would have, uh, but we do know that they're familiar with the 
opposition from the neighbors. The, uh, uh, as I say, in, initially, uh, my clients were under the impression that this is the way they wanted to proceed. We've since been told uh, that they have no interest in having a, a temporary system through the summer. Uh, but the, the uh, uh, you know, having started down the road, we'd like to get the flexibility of having that permission. And right now, um, they think that's already working on a new design. So, I mean, okay. it could be that these owners uh, buy and install a new system right away. So, uh, anyway, that's where we are right at the moment, trying to get okay. trying to get permits for the new system. But it's going to be a while. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, Bill Litchfield, if I could comment briefly. Sure. Uh, I represent the, the contractual buyer, and we understand the, the flexibility that is being sought, and uh, we have no, no particular objection to that flexibility, but we are concerned uh, with compliance with both our contract and, of course, with your regulations. So we, we don't pose the request per se, but we do want a compliant system. If it is designed and approved by, by your board and the Conservation Commission, then that, that can be a way to go. But we're, we're a little bit troubled by, by the, the sort of uncertainty. We have a contract to buy the property, and we'd like a, a functioning uh, Title V system. Okay. This is Judy. Um, I think that that is something that needs to be worked out between the buyers and the sellers. I mean, we can give you three months, we can give you six months, but it's still going to come down to what the agreement is between the sellers and the buyers as to when the system gets upgraded. Either way, it's going to be upgraded and meet the requirements of Title V uh, and the Conservation Commission, presumably. So. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I agree with Judy's comment. The, uh, uh, as I say, I'll reiterate again, Bad Eldridge is in the process of designing uh, a new system uh, to bring it, uh, additions to the system to bring it into compliance. Uh, you know, that's a, that can be a challenging uh, process under the uh, regulatory scheme we have here in Chatham. Uh, given the difficulties we're having with the neighbors, uh, you know, whether uh, Mr. Uh, Litchfield's clients uh, end up buying the property or not, um, we'd just like the flexibility to get through the summertime with the system. Subject to whatever, whatever conditions Judy suggests. This is Judy. I, I mean, I don't envision this is a very large lot. Um, I don't envision there being a lot of issues with getting a system designed in there. It should be pretty straightforward, and I don't think the neighbors have a lot to a lot to say about, you know, I mean, if there's an existing house and we have to put a system there, um, it's going to get it's going to get approved one way or another. I don't I don't right. foresee it being a long drawn out um, experience, and we do these all the time. So uh, just just to say that 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 this if we needed this to go in in two or three months it could very easily not to uh, say that a house would be re redesigned and built by then a different house but with the existing property the way it is a new system could very quickly be designed judy do we have is there a precedent this is john beckley is there a precedent for the board of health extending the 90-day uh rule on yeah. um there is yeah. okay yes and it usually because the buyer requests it not because the seller is requesting it that's why i'm I, i'm i was a little confused um to begin with but usually it's the it's the buyer who wants the time because they plan to renovate substantially or rebuild the property and they you know that does that could take six months if you've got to go to z zoning and conservation and all so, but the system okay. itself can be upgraded fairly easily, assuming that 
Thad could get a plan together and we could get an installer in there. So why don't we, we just why don't we just go ahead and replace the system right now? That's my question. The uh, Bill Litchfield, if I could, the, the buyers are, are perfectly uh, fine with that. It's their expectation that they would have if it needs to be replaced. We've never seen the test, but I gather it's not a passing system. So uh, if if an inspection has been done or in lieu of an inspection in light of Bob's Bob Dubas's knowledge, uh, then uh, a new system is, is cer certainly fine by the buyers. Uh, Judy, th this is Noble. If, if somebody um, voluntarily inspects their uh, septic system and it fails, what are what is the what's what's the uh, rule, the health department rule for them at that for, in that situation? Um, if Not a system a fails, they just voluntarily uh, inspect it and it fails. Um, we would require an upgrade. I mean, there might be more wiggle room with a voluntary inspection, depending on the type of failure. If it was something that was, um, you know, an environmental or public health hazard uh, imminent, then we would certainly get right on it. If it was something that was, um, you know, I, I can't, I can't off the top of my head think of a reason, but we may be able to give people more time. Um, uh, in some circumstances, but yes, if it fails an in inspection, it has to be upgraded. Has to be up within 90 days. Is that the rule? Yes, that's what our regulations say. This so, system, hey. the only reason this system failed, it is a very old system, um, but it failed because the leach pit is too close to groundwater. We re we require under our regulations a four foot separation between the bottom of the system and the groundwater. Um, Title five. And their regulations just says a separation. So it could be six inches and it could pass. But our regulations are more stringent um, because of many environmentally sensitive areas we have along the coast. Um, so, you know, we definitely would want to get this upgraded as soon as possible. Right. So to me, it's um, it, it's a, uh, it's been a voluntarily inspected and failed. And so they have 90 days and they're basically asking us to extend that for, well, six months, you suggested, to through the summer in a system that's, you know, working okay in the short term. So Correct. that's that's the way I'm looking at it. And then what the buyers and the, and the sellers do and all that, that's contractually, that that's up to them. We, right. we would just be approving an, an extent, a short extension for a, a system that's failed after a voluntary inspection. Is that, does that sound right? Yes. But, yeah, but, I mean, I, we can approve this, and and then the buyers and the sellers can figure out what they really want to do, and that's up to right. them. And then, and then we would just have to put a date to say through the summer would be I don't know if that's six months or till September first or something, whatever. Just pick a pick a time. Hey, yeah, no, I, Noble, this is John. Yeah, exactly, Noble. My my my, I'm sitting here thinking we have a we have a system that's encroached into the groundwater. And and we have a a ninety day rule uh, for connection, and we have a willingness uh, and a practical uh, a set of circumstances where it could easily be done within ninety days. I don't know why we just don't stay stay the course and require that the property receive a new septic system within 90 days. Yeah, I, you can talk me into that. That That's fine. I mean, I, I, I think that's the, a reasonable position. I mean, I, I'm okay giving an ex, giving a waiver, but I don't even, I'm not hearing a strong argument why, why we even need to do a six month ex, extension. This is Judy. No. I mean, if you no. deny the, if you were to deny the request, then the, the, the buyers could certainly come back and request more time after the fact. Well, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, so the, uh, the house is currently vacant and it's been vacant for a year. Uh, and we may not necessarily uh, sell the property <clears throat> to Mr. Litchfield's clients. The, the it's, it's conceivable that the uh, whoever does buy the property 
would prefer to wait until September to install a new system. So right now, this, right now, the property is vacant. Sort of the worst case scenario is somebody might use it for up to 90 days during the summertime uh, if we get a buyer uh, that's willing to take it under those circumstances. And then the new system gets installed in September. Oh. What, what's wrong with the thought that the current owners, upon notification, simply proceed to replace the system with a new system within 90 days, and then the property transfers at that point? Well, this, this is probably not going to surprise you, uh, Mr. Chairman, but the, uh, they'd like to have money in hand to do the work uh, rather than spending the money now. And considering the fact that the house is currently empty, uh, we see that it's, we don't believe there's any harm to the environment. And the fact oh. is that these kind of extensions have been granted fairly routinely over the years. John, John, I just wanted to make clear that our regulations say 90 days from the date of transfer. So, you know, okay. if, they, if they don't sell to these buyers and, and then some other buyers come along a month or two from now, we may not have an issue. So I just want to throw that out there. That's it's not... It's That's not 90 answer. days from the date of the inspection. It's from the date of transfer. And there's no transfer even scheduled yet. Correct. Well, there is one scheduled, Mr. Chairman. We're actually um, very soon. It, it, there, there is a scheduled closing. It had been this village field. I'm sorry. It had been scheduled for uh, last month, but because of the septic issues, we're operating under the contractual 30-day extension. Okay. I mean, uh, this is noble again, but if if it's failed from a voluntary inspection, not a transfer, it's still ninety. It's still a ninety-day requirement, correct, Judy? He, he, yeah, our regulations are for real estate transfers. So on a voluntary tr um, inspection, we would have to look at the situation, as I said, to see what type type of a um, public health hazard it was and how much time would be given would okay, depend so, on that. So then it's individual, not. Straight. Yes, yes. We, don't, we don't get a lot of voluntary inspections. The only reason why this was done this way was because um, they were trying to save the sellers, I think, the, the, the expense of having a complete inspection when the inspector knew it was already failed. Uh, Judy, I'm not in favor of this half-assed thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ed. We know how you th you feel. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, this is an, an anonymous. You know, yeah, they're, they're playing rockets with salt. I, I mean, I could but make the come suggestion. Come on, let's get down to get to the I business could. of it. Give them the what they want and take it away which what you don't want. I think that I mean, if you wanted to, John, we could continue this and let the let the um, attorneys figure out what their clients want to do, right? And bring let it back them to us. Let it around. Uh, that's just a suggestion. Otherwise, uh, you can do either approve it or disapprove it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Bill Litchfield, on behalf of the buyers, uh, the the uh, suggestion of uh, continuing this to your next meeting is certainly acceptable to my clients. Of course, because your clients don't have anything to do with the property right now. They have an agreement that's going to expire in less than 30 days, and then my clients are going to decide what happens to the property. I'd like to request again for an extension until September before the system has to be replaced. I, uh, the, are we still here? Yes, we are, Ed. We're still yeah. wrestling with well, what to do here. Uh, it's, 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 it's quite obvious that uh, it, they've got to have a time frame, and they're, they're playing games. This okay. is Richard Edwards. Can I make a comment? This is who? Richard Edwards. Yes, sir. Go ahead, so, Richard. So if, uh, if, if, if I have a cesspool in my backyard and it overflows and, and the guy and I call somebody to come pump it out and they say, well, this cesspool has failed. And, and if, the, if, the, 
the, the Board of Health knew about this. Am I to understand that there's nothing that needs to be done as long as I'm not going to sell the house or, 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 no. or, or rebuild it? That, that, no, that, that would be considered an imminent public health um, well, if we've, got, we've got a cesspool that's within two feet of groundwater. Mm. You know, that's a public health right. problem. But we're saying, oh, we don't need to do anything about because maybe people won't move in until the fall. But people may move in next week. Uh, so it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to just sort of ignore this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we're not ignoring this at all. And, you know, as I say, we... We're, Thad Elvich is in the process of designing a new system. And the fact that Mr. Litchfield chimed in with what his clients want uh, in his claim of a contract that, that even though it's going to expire by its own terms in less than 30 days, uh, you know, this is a, it's a perfectly reasonable request. The house is currently vacant. The system has been there for 50 years uh, without any noticeable harm to uh, any aspect of the, of the, uh, uh, environment, and it's a it's a very standard request. Well, we don't want to do construction in the summertime, so we don't know who we're going to be dealing with necessarily on the purchase. We're just asking for some flexibility. That's all. Um, I got to say, as the board chairman, my my preference here is I could be persuaded to do otherwise, but my preference would be to deny the variance request and uh, not approve it at this time, and then wait and see what, what comes back. Judy, could we do that if we wanted to? Yes, certainly. Because then the, the applicant can put together the, the permit application and plans, and then if they need more time, they could return to us when we have more information. Right. What are other I agree with that, Ted. Noble? Yeah, Noble, no, I, I go along with the, yeah, I, I agree with uh, John's recent suggestion that we deny the, the variance and then proceed from there. Not the variance, the request. Carol? Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. This is Bill Riley. On behalf of my clients, I withdraw the request for the variance. Okay. Thank you very much for your time today. Okay, you're welcome. All right, Judy, so there's no action required at this point by the board, true? I guess not. The, the um, I'll make a note in the minutes that the request for variance was withdrawn at the request of Attorney Riley. Okay. All right. That That's the last general business agenda item. And let's go on to item six, which is our update and discussion of COVID-19 with Dr. Robert Duncanson, Director of Health and Natural Resources. Dr. Duncanson. Yeah, good afternoon, John and members of the board. So just quickly, because um, I know you've had a busy meeting today. Um, right now, uh, as of yesterday afternoon, Barnstable County was at 9,302 cases of COVID-19. And that was an increase of 83 cases from the previous day. Um, and that continued, a, there was a slight downward trend there. Um, the previous uh, four days before that were 116 cases, 93 cases, 90 cases, and 150 cases. So there was, you know, yesterday's count of 83 is down slightly, uh, but you could tell those numbers have been kind of bouncing kind of back and forth. Um, and I think what's more significant is those higher counts. So those those uh, five days of higher counts actually followed two days where we were only in the 30s. We had a day of uh, an increase of 31 cases and 36 cases, and then we're back up into the, you know, 100, 150 range um, for the last five days on the Cape. So we're, we're still, we may not be completely over the, the last bit of the surge from the holidays here on Cape Cod. 
Um, in terms of deaths, we are currently, or as of yesterday afternoon, we were at 354 deaths. Um, and that, you know, we've been averaging two to three deaths per day, but we did have two days, um, five days ago, we were, where we had two days in a row of zero deaths. So the deaths mirror, if you will, uh, what the caseload has been. In Chatham specifically, we are currently at 243 cases, and that is total since the pandemic began, uh, and basically counting all the way back to January 1st of 2020. Uh, we had 106 cases in Chatham in January of 2021. Um, and as we've talked about previously, January of this year has been the highest caseload that we've experienced and reflects the surge that took place post Thanksgiving and post Christmas, New Year's and, and other holiday party situations. Um, and as we've talked about before, a significant majority of those cases were related to the Liberty Commons facility. Um, anywhere from probably about 60 to 70% of those cases uh, were related to Liberty Commons. And just again, you know, even though Liberty Commons has done a phenomenal job with the outbreak since it began last year, um, you know, they finally ran into the brick wall roughly in mid-December through mid-January, uh, which, you know, just shows how insidious this virus has been, in, you know, in terms of getting into even the most secure, if you will, facilities. Uh, because Liberty Commons was really doing everything right and went above and beyond uh, to keep it at bay. And unfortunately, they were not successful in, in total. So far in February of this year, we've had 25 cases, uh, which is, you know, somewhat concerning considering we're just at the beginning of the month. Uh, so we may be on track to have a similar February to what we saw in January or we may just be, be experiencing kind of the tail end of the, you know, the holiday surge and hopefully the, the rest of the month uh, we see a fairly significant drop off. I somewhat anticipate that we might because we're definitely seeing a downswing in cases in Liberty Commons. And in fact, over the weekend, the last of their residents that they had in their dedicated COVID wing were released. So they do not currently or as of yesterday afternoon, uh, they, did, they did not have any further active COVID-19 cases. Um, and seeing as how they accounted for a fairly significant portion of the town's overall cases, um, hopefully we will see a similar downturn in Chatham cases. Although I will tell you in the last week and a half or so, uh, we have seen a number of cases where we're seeing multiple cases in the same household. So, you know, it may start out with one positive case in a household and then the next, you know, within a day or two, all of a sudden we have two, three, four cases all in the same household. And that's consistent with what we and the state and others have been saying recently that the most significant route of transmission recently has been household contact. Uh, you know, we're not seeing it in restaurants, we're not seeing it in stores, we're not seeing it in schools, uh, but we are clearly seeing it in household contact. So it really just reiterates that and the need for, you know, when somebody in a household is identified uh, with COVID-19, it's really a, incumbent upon them to stay away from the rest of the family members uh, whenever absolutely possible you know, separate bedrooms, separate bathrooms, you know, having their meals in the bedroom, not going into other parts of the house to really try to keep it under control. Um, so far since the pandemic began, there have been 22 deaths in Chatham. Uh, 16 of those have been at Liberty Commons. Um, the majority of those uh, Liberty Commons deaths occurring in December and January, unfortunately. Uh, but we have had uh, you know, six deaths of Chatham residents outside the Liberty Commons type facility. So that's a quick update on the numbers. The other thing that I wanted to um, talk about briefly was, um, and the board was all copied on the press release early this morning, 
But Barnstable County did announce that starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow on Tuesday, they are going to open registration for two clinics that are going to be held here on Cape Cod. And these clinics are for folks that are in phase one of the state's uh, vaccine priority listing or those that are 75 years or older. So the first priority group in phase two and they live and work, live or work on Cape Cod. So the first um, clinic is going to be on Wednesday, February 10th at the Cape Cod Melody Tent in Hyannis. And there are 1,365 doses available at that clinic. The second clinic is going to be at the Little Creek parking area in East Ham. And that is going to be on February 12th, which is Friday. And there are 375 slots available in that clinic. And as I said, registration for those slots will open tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. on the state's website, www.massimmunizations.org. Again, that's www.maimmunizations, one word, dot org. For those folks that may be listening in or for if you, you know, if you're listening and you know somebody that may be in that circumstance, for folks that are not able to make an appointment through the state's online system, the Barnstable County Helpline at 774 Three three zero three zero zero one. Again, seven seven four three three zero three zero zero one will be available to help folks make appointments by phone tomorrow. However, because of the limited number of appointments and the large population of you know older seventy five folks on Cape Cod. I think the helpline, frankly, is going to be inundated um, when it when they open up tomorrow morning, uh, when that registration period opens at 9 a.m. So I strongly urge anyone who can do it online to do so. Um, but keep in mind, folks, you know, we only have about 1,700 doses between those two clinics available. Um, and as we know, there are tens of thousands of potential people who are eligible on Cape Cod. So, you know, it's just unfortunate that we're still battling the shortage of vaccine, both, you know, nationally within the state and here in Cape Cod. There are, you know, there have been appointments available at the off Cape mass immunization sites, Gillette Stadium, Fenway Park, et cetera. Uh, you know, as of last Thursday, I think there were something like 20,000 slots available. I haven't checked this today to see how many are available. But if folks can travel, can make that trip off Cape, you know, that might be a quicker, easier way um, to get an appointment than, you know, trying to get the limited number of doses that are available here in Cape Cod. And then just quickly, Judy has been working with two organizations um, here on the Cape um, to bring vaccine to some of our elder population um, that can't travel. Um, at the Wise Assisted Living Center and also at the Housing Authority facility. Um, Judy's been working with either one of our local pharmacies or with Outer Cape Health Services um, to provide vaccine for those for them at their facility. Uh, you know, like everything else, it's contingent upon vaccine availability, uh, but we are trying to address those folks that, you know, don't have transportation options. Uh, you know, can't do it online, can't travel to any other place um, and whatnot. So we we're working and hopefully that is going to come together, um, you know, say within the next week to two weeks. Um, and she's done a great job reaching out to them um, and making that happen. So with that, I think that's all I've got for the moment and would be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, and I Dr. see it. Bob, Ed yeah. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, where the hell can I get an, uh, uh, an, uh, 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 
a, a needle. Yeah, I'm trying. My sake, everywhere I go, there's no, no, you can't go do that. Yeah, as I indicated, Ed, it's it's a very difficult situation right now because of the lack of vaccine. But there are the two clinics, one in Hyannis and one in East Ham, the registration for which is going to open tomorrow um, at 9 a.m. You know, and as I said, there are locations off Cape. There may be locations in some of the pharmacies here on Cape Cod as well. Um but, you know, those appointments fill up very quickly because they just don't have a lot of availability. Do you uh, know there will be the more pharmacies? clinics coming to Cape Cod specifically, you know, over the next couple of weeks. As far as we know, the state is still planning a mass vaccination site for Cape Cod, um, but likely it won't be up and functional until the end of February at the earliest. Um, we haven't seen any details on that yet, but the governor has indicated um, that one hopefully will be coming to the Cape. Yeah, this is Richard Edwards. Yeah. Uh, I listened to the Barnstable robocall last week. Yep. And uh, basically what, it was, what was said was about 1,000 doses a week are coming to Cape Cod, and we have about 10,000 people over the age of 75. If each of them needs two doses, that's 20,000 doses, that's 20 weeks, which would mean we'd get them all vaccinated by about June. Mm -hmm. uh, it's high, and the system that we have is sort of analogous to what the federal government did to the states back in April, pitting all the states against one another to get PPE. What we've done is set up a system that pits everybody over 75 against one another to try to scramble on the internet to get a vaccine. And yet what you end up is survival of the fittest. The older people that are less able to do the internet don't get a vaccine. And the younger people or people who have family members who are computer literate do. The whole thing is absurd. You know, why can't they make a website where you go in and you register and you tell them your name and your comorbidities and where you live and say, I'll, I can make it up to 30 miles from my house and have the, the government let you know when there's vaccine available for you. This idea of pitting everybody against everybody else is just causing everybody to just be insane and, 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 and uh, extremely anxious. And then to make it even worse, you go on TV and they say, make sure and go out and get your vaccine as soon as possible because it's critical that you get vaccinated. It's gonna. It's just driving people crazy. <laughs> uh, Richard, I, I, you know, I, I don't disagree with you one bit. Uh, you know, we at the local level are not controlling the vaccine or the process. Even at the county level, Barnstable County is not controlling the process. Um, you know, you've raised all valid points, and uh, you know, they're they're not points that haven't already been raised. Um, you know, I'm on, Judy and I are on twice weekly calls with DPH. We have a weekly call with the county and, you know, these are not new ideas. Um, you know, I mean, I saw in the news over the weekend, there's a lady um, in Massachusetts who basically designed her own website um, using all the information that's available on the state's website, but supposedly making it much easier to, to navigate. Um, you know, and whether or not the state's hopefully going to reach out and, and, you know, try to take advantage of that, I, I can't tell you. But, you know, the bottom line is, and we've been saying this for six weeks or more now, uh, you know, unfortunately, there just isn't enough vaccine available at the moment. Uh, you know, in the ideal world, there'd be enough vaccine for everybody immediately. And that's just not the case. And, you know, I, I'm not about to critique um, whether or not the situation's gone as well as it could. I have my own opinions about it, but it's what we're dealing with right now. And so at the local level, we're just trying to do everything we can um, to make it as easy as possible for people. Yeah, just about an hour before the meeting, I did go online. And even though I'm not 75, I clicked into the system and said I was 75 just to see what would happen. And there are about uh, three or 4,000 slots available at Gillette Stadium mm -hmm. over the next three or four days. Yep. I'm yep. not sure long those are going to continue to be available, but an hour ago, they were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Bob, this is yeah. Noble. Um, ha have any um, additional businesses reported positive COVID cases since our last meeting, which was just a week ago, and any response from the post office? And then one other question. Did the town of Sandwich get their own independent supply of vaccine? It, it made it sound that way in, in, a, in an article in the paper. Okay, uh, post office question, no. We have not heard anything from the post office uh, regarding their situation, whether or not there's been any changes. You know, all the people there um, have now finished their quarantine or isolation periods. Um, and we're not aware, we have not been made aware of any new uh, instances of COVID-19 positive cases at the post office. Uh, we have not been made aware of any other positive cases at any of the businesses in Chatham either. Um, after we had that flurry just before your meeting last week, um, it, it's been relatively quiet um, in terms of, you know, inputs from businesses or offices or anything like that. Um, and in terms of Sandwich, um, Sandwich did receive their own independent supply, if you will. Uh, every town is eligible for X amount of vaccine. We have reached out and made our request. Um, you know, one of the difficulties or, or not difficulties, I shouldn't say that. Um, you know, we work through the VNA, and so the VNA is currently working with us to look at setting up clinics similar to, you know, what we do for flu vaccine. Um, so that is in the works. Sandwich has their own public health nurse and was able to kind of coordinate it all internally. Uh, but we're working with VNA and with the county, and, and part of it may be that um, you know, at least initially, some of our vaccine allotment, if you will, goes through the county. So we're still working all that out um, to get the details. But part of it is also the storage capacity, you know, especially the Pfizer vaccine. You need to have ultra low temperature storage capability. Uh, you know, there's only really two locations on the Cape that have that capability, Cape Cod Healthcare um, and at the county. You know, the individual towns don't have the, the kind of facilities that it takes to, re, you know, to hold the Pfizer vaccine. Um, so it, it's difficult, but we're trying to do everything we can to get it out there as quickly as possible. Uh, Judy, if you want to add anything to that. Uh, no, that's that's about all you can say. Yeah. Um, I and then, at this point, they're not giving, even if we did ask for any vaccine, they would give us such a small amount, we would not be able to set up a, a clinic. Um, they want you to be able to do continuous clinics from now till the end of the whole event, which could be six months to a year away. So right now we're just working with the VNA to, to see about having some clinics in the future. Uh, John Beckley here. Richard, you have your hand up again? Oh, I guess I didn't take it down. Okay. Sorry. Anyone else want to pose any questions oh, or comments uh, to Bob? Uh, uh, who's there? John? Yeah, this is this is John. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, this is Ed Sheehan. And I can't understand why I, I can't get a, sh a shot and I'm on the board of help. And I I, I work as a uh, funeral service. Ed, why don't you give me a call and um, I can see if I can assist you. I'm not sure if funeral directors are um, uh, in the phase one group. Um, being a Board of Health member doesn't give you any any um, additional, you know, help, but but I can look into the funeral director issue. Um, but why don't you give me a call after the meeting or tomorrow and we can talk about it further. Okay. Okay, okay. thanks, Ed. Thanks. Any further questions to Dr. Duncanson from Board, Board of Health members? I see Elaine Gibbs has her hand up. Elaine? Yes, thank you. Uh, I had listened to Baker's press conference before they released 22,000 doses to let Fenway. And... Um, he even mentioned Cape Cod, saying that we had the old, we were the oldest county in terms of demographic in the state, and yet we're only getting 1,500 doses. 
Uh, that concerns me. Uh, and then uh, Bob had said that those doses are going to be for people who either live or work on the Cape. And we can geographically restrict it to people who live here. I do not know why, since people who live off Cape but may work here are probably closer to Gillette and or some other state run facility that they would be getting uh, using up some of our very limited dosages. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how you prove that someone is working on the Cape. Is it the honor system? Because I think that's where a lot of the 600 doses went uh, that came on the Cape before we realized it, that uh, people just had to drive over the bridge. So I would hope we would restrict our doses to residents uh, right. because we do have an elderly population. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. All right, any other follow-up questions or comments to Dr. Duncanson from Board of Health members? If not, thank you, Dr. Duncanson, for your fine report, and thank you, Judy, for helping with that. I'd like to move, move the agenda and uh, approve the February 1st minute. Can I get a motion to approve the February 1st minute? Somebody should be on mute. He's got a dog barking. <laughs> did this, did the noble, I move to approve the minutes. Uh, who was that, Noble? Noble, yeah. We have a duet. Can I get a second to approve the minutes? Ed Sheehan, second. Ed Sheehan, thank you, Ed. When I call your name, please indicate how you wish to vote on approving the minutes of February 1st. Dr. Noble Hansen. Approve. Ed Sheehan. Approve. Carol Boyce. Carol. Car Carol would not be eligible since she wasn't at the meeting. Oh, okay. Good point. Thank you. And, and my vote is to approve John Beckley. So we have our or form to approve the minutes. Um, that is that basically covers our agenda for today. Um, I'd like to go ahead and adjourn the meeting unless somebody has a pressing need to raise a last minute question. Can I just ask one question? Sure thing. And uh, I had a great time taking the, eth the online ethics uh, training. Mm -hmm. And I have this certificate of completion. What am I supposed to do with that? That goes to the town clerk. Take, take it, send it to the town clerk. Yeah, Richard, did you get sworn in yet? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you can either drop it off there or if it's easier, you can drop it off here and we can get it to Julie. That's no problem. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Elaine, is that an old hand or a new hand? Okay, let's go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Ed Sheehan. Okay, can I get a second? Second, Noble. Okay. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. When I call your name, please indicate how you vote on the motion to adjourn. Dr. Hansen. Uh, adjourn. Ed Sheehan. Ed Sheehan. Carol Boyce. Carol, you want to unmute and vote? Okay, I will vote to adjourn. So we have three votes to adjourn. Um, that's it for today, everyone. Thank you all for your participation. And uh, see you next meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye.